What's up guys, my name is Fran and welcome back to the channel and I'm super duper excited about today's video and that is because we are finally going to start working on a project that I've actually been doing a lot of planning for for a number of weeks. The last couple of weeks there's been a lot of waiting for components to come in from Amazon and eBay and then a ton of testing, stress testing and stability testing but finally we are at a point where I'm ready to launch this thing to production. In today's video we're going to be checking out my brand new storage server codenamed Cambridge. So how did this project came to be? Well, recently I found myself in sort of a pickle when I was working on a massive project and I kept running out of space on my one terabyte Samsung T5 SSD. While it's a great SSD with great performance, unfortunately, it just doesn't cut it when working with project files that are in raw format. So when planning out for this new storage project, I had a number of prerequisites in mind. Number one, the server needed to be way more stable than my previous server, the DSM Exponology. Now this was running sort of a bootleg version of DSM, while it did run super stable for a number of months. Months, I always felt weird not being able to do security updates. Number two, this new server needed to be way faster than my previous server. Now on the previous server, I did have a 10 gigabit ethernet adapter as well as SSD caching. However, I did see data speeds only capping out at around 400 megabytes per second. And I need something way, way faster if I'm gonna be editing raw files directly off of the disk. And number three, I wanted the disk to be made up of all SSD drives. And I figured with the continuously dropping price tag of SSDs, this was somewhat attainable on a aspiring tech tube budget. Okay, so now that we have all those prerequisites out of the way and I have the storage server just over here over my left shoulder, let's grab the camera off of the tripod and take a look at what I picked out for Project Cambridge. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. So first off, we have the actual storage server itself with a couple of PCI Express cards. We'll get to those in just a second. But the actual storage server itself, I will leave the specs up on the screen of what the server is, but it is a eight core Xeon processor, one of those cheaper ones. I picked it up for around $20 online. And then I also ended up picking up, let me see if I get a good angle here, uh, one of these cheapo motherboards. It's made by a company called Katuke or Ku2K, but it's uh, one of those Chinese knockoff boards that cost somewhere around $70, and it was an X79 chipset compatible with that $20 Xeon processor. And all of this as of right now is being powered by a cheapo Pico power supply. Now, obviously, this is not the power supply we'll be using for the final product. It's a thousand watt power supply inside of the case that we'll get to in just a moment. But on top of the motherboard, you'll notice a number of cards. This is an Intel 10 gigabit ethernet card. So it's a 10 gigabit ethernet copper card because we are gonna be connecting this thing through 10 gigabit. And we might do some link aggregation. So we got two ports there. Then we have two LSI uh, RAID cards here. So the, both these cards are capable of carrying up to eight disks. So we are gonna be putting a total of 16 disks inside of the server. Now, speaking of disks, just to the left of this server, we have a couple of disks here. These are just gonna be some of the disks we're using. We're using Iron Wolf uh, six terabyte hard drives. The top two are actually 10 terabyte. We're not using those. The ones under it are gonna be those six terabyte hard drives. Uh, and then this thing, actually I'll save that for part two of this video. So I've already gone ahead and shut down the server and what I'm gonna do is we're now gonna um, take out all the cards and we're gonna fit it inside of the case that we've been using, the um, Silverstone case. We got the name of this model, but again, I'll post it somewhere on the screen. Uh, but this case is the same one we used before. We're gonna need to magically get some light over here. Okay, so this is Silverstone sort of server grade case. Um, well, not server grade, but it's got a bunch of 3.5 inch bay drives, eight of them in total. And uh, let's see if I can get this off with one hand. Got my EVJ 1000 watt power supply. And uh, this thing is pretty awesome because it's got some fans. It's gonna keep the hard drives cool. And then it has a back pane, which are, let's see if I can bring up the exposure a bit. So it's got the back pane back here. So you can see um, it's gonna have SSD and then two Molex connectors for the power for all the uh, drives. All right, so I just moved the mount. Oh, great, there we go. So there's no uh, manual for the motherboard, so I have no idea where these, um, where these, well, this is, so this is the box that the motherboard actually came in, and as you can see, it's pretty generic where it just says motherboard. Um, and there's no manual for it, so I have no idea where the front panel goes. Um, can you zoom in here? I don't know if you can see. The front panel just has a bunch of colors, um, and normally it's labeled, but it's not labeled. So uh, we'll try our best and see what we can do. 
Okay, so about 30 minutes later, we have a pretty put together system. As you guys can see, I have all of our cards in there, the 10 gigabyte card as well as the two LSI cards. We also have our motherboard all hooked up and some power connectors. Now I know the cable management still isn't the prettiest, uh, but it's semi-decent, way better than it was before considering we're using these uh, SAS to SATA breakaway cables. And uh, yeah, for the most part, we have all the existing hard drives connected to one controller card uh, on the back plane, and then we're gonna use the other controller card to connect the other eight or so drives once we get those uh, installed inside the system. So I guess the only thing left for us to actually do is go ahead and put the hard drives inside of the bays and uh, power her on and make sure she's booting up and working. Okay, so now that I have all of my drives installed, it is time for the moment of truth. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in the ethernet cable. Now I don't actually have uh, any type of graphics card in the system, so we're just gonna have to power it on and uh, hopefully the web interface loads up. Uh, and I'll just go ahead and hit the power button right over here. Awesome, all of our fans are going. I get a couple of beeps from the motherboard because of no video. All right, so what we're gonna do now is just ping. I set up our hope, my host file with the IP address. Ah, and just as I was about to give up and start troubleshooting, we started to get uh, pings back from our custom host name. Uh, really good response times too. We're on uh, 10 gig. So, yep, we're connected. Let's just, and our server loads up and we are good to go. Log in and I just wanna make sure that we can see all of our this. And bam, there we go. We have every single one of our disks being detected. Zero through seven. Awesome. Okay, guys, so that is it for this video for now. We consider this part one to a two-part series. In the next video, we're gonna do some configuration, some performance testing, and figure out how we're gonna fit another eight hard drives inside of the system when we only have eight bays. As always, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Also, while you guys are down there, if you like this video, hit the like button. And if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. Once again, guys, my name is Fran. Thanks for checking out this video. And I'll see you guys in part two.